Please put your name on your chart. Please put your number on your chart. The chart that you have in front of you looks just like this. Yeah. Okay. You can grab. Really? I'll grab you one. Okay, the chart that you have, if it's not a white piece of paper, looks like what's on the board. So, Levi, let me give you yours. There you go. That'll fix it. You can. So it has, in the first column, place name. In the second column, it has descriptive words. And then in the third column, it says descriptive sentence of your place and memory of your place. So what do you think we're going to be trying to come up with in writing today? What is this chart for? What kind of ideas are we going to be trying to come up with? Wesley? Story starts. Story starts. What kind of story starts? Ashlyn? Places. Places. Specifically places with what, Amelia? Setting. Yeah. Setting. Places with setting. And places that you have good memories at or very vivid memories at. They don't necessarily have to be good but they have to be stories that have a beginning, middle, and an end to them, right? So I have a lot of stories at McDonald's, but I don't have a lot of stories at McDonald's that have a really good beginning, middle, and end. So I'm going to make sure that whatever the places that I choose are, they're actually important. So let's look at this chart, and I'll do what I usually do, where I kind of fill it out, and then I send you on your own to fill this out. The end goal of today is for you to have this filled out with five places, and the five places, descriptive words for those places, and a descriptive sentence for each. So you're gonna have five places total, three descriptive words for each, and then one sentence. Let's go through how I, how I plan on having that happen. So, a place for me that has a good memory. A memory that I, actually a lot of memories. Memories that I could tell you a story with a clear beginning, middle, and end. The first place is my grandparents' house. Oh, so I need to write down the place name. Now I need to add, add descriptive words about my grandparents' house. What kind of descriptive words would you add about a place? How could you describe, what kind of descriptive words would you use for a place? What do you think, Cadence? Fun. Fun? Yeah, that's fun. I need three of them, so I have one. I need another one. Daniel? Over-exaggerated. Over-exaggerated. Uh, maybe your grandparents are. That's not going to describe mine. <laughs> Let's try another one. Nice. Over-exaggerated could be. A descriptive word? You'd have to go into more detail with that. House. Yes, grandparents' house. Yes. <laughs> Micah. Mad. Mad? Mad? For the place? Okay, all right. Maybe. I'll put that as a disclaimer over here. I have gotten mad at my grandparents' house before. That's not the descriptive word for the actual place itself. The place itself isn't mad. I'll come up, with, but that's, that could be an emotion I had there. Isaac? Boring? It could be boring. You could tell a story about one time you were so bored at your grandparents' house that you have a beginning, middle, and end to the boredom. Okay, I'll take one more and I'll give, add some more of my own. Amelia? Spoiling. Spoiling. Okay. Spoiling. Okay, those are descriptive words. Fun, bored, and spoiling. Those are some words you could use to describe it. But now I want you to think about this. If I'm trying to describe a place, do I usually say to you, man, McDonald's is spoiling. Right? McDonald's, not, you're trying to describe a place, man, that place is just spoiling. Right? What other kind of words would I use for that? Well, I would use some different types of descriptive words that actually describe the physical place and my emotions while being there. So yes, yeah, spoils is something I could do. Fun is a good descriptive word because I do have fun in my grandparents' house. Another thing, it could be, you could describe it as quiet. My grandparents' house is in the middle of the woods. It's insanely quiet. You can't hear cars. It's up north in grayling, and you can't hear anything. The birds in the morning, and that's it. I'll also describe it as relaxing for me. 
For me, it's quiet and relaxing. I also have a ton of fun there, just hanging out. So I have my three descriptive words for my grandparents' house. Now, I need a descriptive sentence of my place and of my memory. I want to try to think here. My grandparents' house is fun, it's quiet, and it's relaxing. I want a descriptive se sentence that kind of captures all of that. So when I'm thinking about this, I'm like, okay, how am I going to describe my grandparents' house in one sentence? Nice. How do you think? How would you try using the words from descriptive words? How would you describe my grandparents' house in a sentence now? Let me give it a shot. Okay, you could say, my grandparents' house is fun, quiet, and relaxing. Yeah, absolutely. You could. So that's step one. That's pretty basic. But now when I'm talking about descriptive words, when we're talking about places, I want to make sure I add some sensory language. We don't want to abandon that. So as my descriptive words for my grandparents' house were quiet and relaxing, I want to make sure now I have some sensory language. Let's beef up our places a little bit. So let's come up with another place. Who has a place that they might want to write a story about because it's like kind of cool and they have a lot of cool stuff about there? Melanie? My cousin's house. So your cousin's house. Cousin's house. So now we're all going to get involved. What are some sensory language words? Remember your five senses you could use to describe, say, a cousin's house. Okay. What are, how do I? What do I mean by that? Descriptive words for sensory. Joey. Fun. Fun. It. I mean, you could also use fun again. Sure. Let's get the senses involved now. So we have one descriptive word that, hey man, is this place is fun. I always have fun at my cousin's house. Let's get some sensory words. It could be a phrase as well. Melanie? Entertaining. Entertaining. Okay. Still waiting for us to pull in those senses. Who's got a sensory? Who's got the senses there in Poland? Riley? Really messy. Really messy. So you're seeing the mess, right? So you can say, I see the mess. All right. Words could be fun and messy at the same time. What else? I want more senses. So it can be a phrase. It doesn't have to be a complete sentence. It could be one word. It can be a small phrase. Lila? Loud. Loud. Oh, yeah. Loud. Loud. What kind of loud? Like kid loud or just like, yeah, a lot of kids? Loud. You can be loud. Lots of children. Yeah. Right? So it's loud. There's lots of children. One sentence to describe this cousin's house would be what? One sentence, or give me a descriptive sentence here. Come on, what do you think? Levi? My cousin's house is fun, but very, very loud. Okay. My cousin's house yeah. is fun, but very loud and messy so you're describing the place describing the place so our descriptive words now one thing that i've left out so far is we've given that descriptive sentence of our place but what's the second part of that last column say and what and your memory of that place so I want you to give me a sentence that describes the place. And I want you to give me a sentence of a memory you have at that place. So I'm going to take over to the grandparents' house. When my grandparents' house is fun, quiet, and relaxing, and the, the memory I have, the fondest memory I have of that place is my family gathering together for a reunion.
So I would make sure when I'm describing the setting when I start my story start, I'm using this right here, but I also need a description of my actual memory. So what about a memory for my cousin's house? Well, I could take over that one as well. One of my favorite memories of being at my cousin's house is having a cousin weekend. So I had four cousins over to my cousin's, my other cousin's house. And a cousin weekend where we played a lot of games. And I got stung. I mean, that part wasn't fun, but that's my memory there. It was, we were having a ton of fun, and I got stung by a bee. It was still fun, but I got stung by a bee. So my story then would have to involve these things. So what you're going to do is you are going to start five places. You're going to write down five different places. You need three descriptive words slash phrases. They can be phrases like we just did. And then you need one sentence. for your description, and then one sentence for your memory. When you complete the chart, you need to hold on to it. No thank you with the bag. You need to hold on to it. You need to then Start a story start from this chart as well. Yes, I know we've done so many story starts. You're like, man, when are we going to be done with these things? But they will come back around and we will be using them to our benefit, I promise. So these are your steps over here. I will put them in a box. This is what you need to get done. When you get them done, what are you going to do? Story starts. Where do you write your story starts? Your writer's notebook. Very good. All right. You may begin. 